thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 to 40 or 50 minutes of advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J. I'm Shah Barrett. And I'm Cheryl Phipps. And today we have an awesome guest, Ella Barnard. Hey, Ella. Hello. Hi, welcome. Uh, Now, Ella is going to talk to us all about how she went from earning zero dollars to earning 3k a month using short stories in romance, um, which is something that we haven't really talked about in the spa before, I don't think, like short story, using short stories rather than full length novels. So we're really excited to talk to you today, Ella. Um, And now what I'm going to do first is read out your bio. And then we'll get right into the questions. So, um, Ella Barnard is an author, podcast host on Author Like a Bod, B- sorry, Author Like a Boss podcast. It's actually strangely hard to say. Um, and an author coach. She's here today to talk about how she found success publishing short romances as Liz Fox, going from zero to three three k per month in just three months. So that's pretty awesome. It's a three months thing as well that that kind of has has me interested. So, um, Ella, tell us about how you got into publishing and, and, and writing. Where did you start? What was the... Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so reading is like my reading has always been my thing. And so actually as, you know, as a teen, when I was like, what do I want to do? What I like my first jobs that I applied to were like the bookstores. Cause I'm like, what can I do with books? Cause I always loved reading. Yeah. And, um, and then, uh, my sister, she's kind of a writer and I, and like with the appeal with reading, I was like, maybe I could write. Like, it's always just kind of been, you know, I'd buy a, a writing book, you know, and I've read, you know, bird, I've read all the classics bird by bird on writing, like all those, but I never felt like I, my parents were like, you need to be responsible, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, there's always a need for teachers. And so I kind of went into, um, education and I was a teacher for a little while. I realized that like, while I loved the kids, I wasn't actually very good at imparting <laughs> like <laughs> educational content to them. Like I could love them, but I wasn't, that wasn't my skill set for the kids. And so, um, so then I was just kind of an administrative assistant, like unhappily, <laughs> like, what can I do? What can I do? Like, where can I like, find something to do that I love. And so I kind of started looking back at books because that's, you know, I've always left them. And so, um, I kind of, I, I started looking at authors because that's when self-publishing was kind of starting to become more acceptable. Um, borders, which is a huge bookstore here in the U S closed. And it was like a lot less access to books. We, that we I had like. a couple of branches here and I still grieve every time I go past where they used to be. Yes, I do too. And they were at the time here, they were doing, they were like saving different industries. And I was like, why can't you save borders? Mm. <laughs> um, and so I kind of like, well, let me see what I can do. I, I thought, uh, let me look at you know, self-publishing now, I didn't. And so I just kind of was listening to entrepreneurial podcasts, trying to find my place. And I just ended up kind of, I started here. I started a Facebook book or Facebook group called all writers. Welcome. That's how it started. And tons of people joined it. Like it went to like 10,000 members in wow, like six months wow. or something. It was huge. And I was like, okay, okay. So let do something. And I gradually changed that to author like a boss and started the podcast to interview people because I wanted to find out more (laughs) about self-publishing and I'm not, I don't have that much shame. So I was like, I'll just talk to the people who are doing it, start a podcast, give myself that great excuse. And, um, and after doing that for a little while, I was like, well, let, you know, let me, after doing it for a while, I wanted to help people. Cause I actually really like in my own life, I was frustrated that I hadn't been able to like do what I love that I spent, you know, over a decade t- doing the education and then being an administrative, administrative assistant to not great guys. <laughs> and so, um, I wanted to help other women be able to do what they love. And there's so many writers, there's so many and along these lines uh, or along, along this time, I went to my 
my sister lives in Portland, Oregon. There's a huge used bookstore called Powell's and, um, and it's got used and like, it's a full city block, five stories, six oh, stories, wow. it's huge. Wow. It's like, I could live there <laughs> for the rest of my life. But I went in there and there was all these used books that I had never heard of. And I'd been going to borders every week to get books for the weekend, <laughs> you know, but there was all these books I'd never even seen. And that kind of had me thinking like how many women wrote, I'm a little bit of a feminist, how many women wrote books, wrote a story, submitted it. And somebody said, no. no. And so yeah. we never got access to that because somebody in New York or wherever <laughs> was like, this isn't what's going to sell. And so then we never got to experience that woman's story and genius for mm -hmm. ourselves because somebody said it wasn't what would sell <laughs> and self-publishing like lets people, mm. anybody, if you can find the audience, you know, you can, you can put it out there, whether you can find the audience or not, but if you can find it, then you can make a living. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, so I was like, I want to help women do that. That's what I want to do. Um, so I created a course to help women do that because books and writing and women and money power, the thing I'm like, I want all these things for women to be successful. And then, uh, but I hadn't done it myself. Like I'd interviewed, you know, 60 plus authors and I knew exactly, I was like, oh, this is what they did. This is the, these are the key components. And, uh, but I hadn't done myself. So people weren't buying my course, understandably. <laughs> so then I was like, you know what? I did always want to be a writer. I'm going to do my own course. <laughs> but the, the challenge is that writing takes time you know, and part of the success that I know, like is having enough books that people can find you one time and then keep reading through it. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to keep finding brand new people each, like that's, you need a backlist to really make money. And I'm like, well, writing takes time and I want to coach, not just write. And so I stumbled across these short romances which allowed me to build a backlist faster because mm -hmm. they're shorter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I started that my first book came out in January 31st, 2020. And, um, and then I just started doing all the things that I knew I was supposed to do. <laughs> and, um, I think personally that like, cause January, 2020 is when I like that was basically essentially February because January 31st. Mm -hmm. And so that's then COVID became a thing like mm -hmm. within the next month. Oh, and yeah. I, like, I think a lot of people, a lot of people were into escapism and I think that I was doing AMS ads. And so I think a lot of people took their ads down. And so I was going into them at the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so within three months, I was making $3,000 a month. Like I'm, I'm like, there's a lot of factors, but you know, it worked. And so now I've been writing, uh, books and, and I kind of stepped back from the coaching a little bit for my own mental health during, during COVID mm -hmm. it was like, there was a lot of other things happening yeah. in my life. Yeah, so I was right. like, but this writing I could do at home by myself, you know, mm -hmm. so, so that's what happened. Cool. And, and so let's break down the, the, um, the short stories a little bit. Let's talk about that. So yes. how, how long were they and what was yeah. the specific genre? Is, like what romance is, is mm -hmm. it general romance or what kind of genre? Yeah. So it's a contemporary romance. Mm -hmm. uh, I write about 10,000 words ish, you know, sometimes a little shorter, sometimes a little longer. Mm -hmm. If you look on Amazon, it's the, you know, one out, one hour to 90, 60 to 90 minutes category. Mm -hmm. Cause they have categories. They have a 45, they have a 15 minute romance. 30, like they, wow. <laughs> they have, yeah. you know, they have a, maybe not 15, but they have like, they definitely have 45, 60, 90 and two hour romance categories. Okay. And so what I did is I just went and looked at what was selling in the 60, 90 minute categories and it's contemporary romance primarily. So that's contemporary straight romance is yeah. what I did 
I mean, that's the first thing you do, right? Like you look to see what's selling, yes. obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, and how many have you got out now after? So we're two years down the track now. Yeah. From, um, January 31st, 2020. So how many now? Like over 50. Wow. <laughs> Half wow. a million words published. That's like a that's lot. a lot. <laughs> and is, and so how how would you say how are your books going now? Like what's the difference? Are you still earning three k a month? Or um, yeah, I earned. I went. We. I started this last summer. I started co-writing with another author who we started. We started at the same time in the short romances, and we were each writing our own. And then this last summer, we started co-writing them together releasing a little bit more frequently um, because our skills were very complimentary. Like I, I really like the plotting and the emotional part (laughs) and she really likes the description and the action (laughs) and she doesn't like plotting. And so I was like, nice, perfect. (laughs) So that kind of helped because we were releasing, I was releasing, I went to like every other week release for a little while. And then we were able to release every week when we were doing it together for a while. Um, And so we made more (laughs) that way because we were releasing more frequently and the books are better because we have both of our talents, Mm -hmm. like the parts that I'm not good at. She is, (laughs) you know, so that actually um, some of the, the series that I'm most proud of, I would say is, the ones that the ones that we've done together yeah, yeah. Awesome. Cool. yeah. and are they where are that where would you say they are on the um heat level Ella? are they up there or are they yeah. kind of in the middle they're steamy they're steamy, steamy. Mm-hmm. i mean i have a series that's quite steamy like it's like yeah. <laughs> it's called the the quite steamy series um they i mean they're they're definitely not clean yeah. uh <laughs> or close to clean mm-hmm. but i wouldn't they aren't like dark so, you know, everybody's steam levels are kind of, of course. you know, yeah. I don't know, but I would say, you know, I don't want my family to read them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steamy. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> do, you, do you think steamy, uh, steamy short stories do better than, than say one that's without any sex or is what you call maybe clean? In the short stories, I would say yes. Yeah. 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 And I only say that just because I go and I look at what's selling. Um, I, I, I would say maybe if once you get up to kind of the two hour, like the 20,000 or 25,000 words, Mm. short stories, um, you might have more, more people reading clean Mm. there. Yeah. So, and, and you're talking about that you do better if you can publish weekly. Is that kind of a common thing? Like you, is yeah. That happens? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because, because the people, because they're one hour reads. Mm-hmm. And so once somebody, like, once you find a reader and they know that they like your kind of story, you know, they can read it in an hour. <laughs> and so, um, and they can read lots of people's books in an hour. Like there's a very loyal audience yeah. for these short stories. Cause they can just you know, at their lunch or right before bed yeah. or, you know, nobody has ever said this, but like while they're going to <laughs> while they're on the, in the bathroom, <laughs> in the bath, but yes, in the, I just, I'm just saying that. Cause I think I go, I have no TMI and, but nobody's ever said that, but I know what I do. So <laughs> yeah. and, and when you yeah. first started um, with, with the short stories, and you said you put the first one up on the 31st of January. Did you hold any back or did you just publish as you went? No, because I did what like so many authors do, where I was like, I'm going to publish this in January. Like I, in December, I was like, I'm going to publish this in January. And then for one, I started writing it and I realized like I'd written like 7,000 words and I realized I'd done it all in the wrong POV. Oh, <laughs> like, like no tense. So the mm-hmm. shorts are all the, the main, you know, the popular ones are all first person present tense. Mm. Ah. And I'd done mine first person past tense. Mm. And I had another person point that out. And I was like, oh, and that kind of slowed me down from my first book. Mm. So then like mid January, I was like, you got to get your stuff together. Put that up. For- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put that up for January 31st. It'll still be January. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you didn't have pre-order? 
Mm, I don't think so. No. no. Do, do you do pre-orders now? Or? I do. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We do pre-orders now and we do series, yeah. you know, Maybe series so where you can link the characters and yeah. Yes. So as is it each short story, like, are they linked as in it's the same two characters and they have like a story yeah. over three stories or is it just two characters per story? No, and- two characters per story. It's like a full romance. Yeah. In seven chapters. Okay. And so like, and when, you, a- when you mm-hmm. talk about them being a series, how are they linked usually? Um, we have different, there's different scenarios. It could be like, you know, brothers, like in the same way that you would, yeah, you know, like, yeah. you know, like the Bridgerton series, you know, it's a, brothers and sisters, the same kind of way. Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes though, it's just a theme. Like I've done, you know, like older men, younger women. So I have a whole series that's like her older, you know, mm. biker, her mm. older professor, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Well, but usually I think what does better is, you know, when you can follow, like the character can show up. It, yeah. it does, you know, the, and it gives, it gives people like, oh, I know that guy. I remember when I first had somebody say, you know, is he going to have his own book? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I hadn't thought about it at that point. And I was like, oh, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's cool. somebody's I, asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And can I just say, I take my head off to you to do write a satisfying romance. You know, I'm assuming there's an HEA mm-hmm. or an HF at the at the end. Um and, and such a short um uh word count. That is that is some skills. Like because you know, I I we've got a number of friends that um are category romance writers, you know, the mm-hmm. you Harlequins, Mills and Bone, those sort of ones. And um, you know, people that don't understand romance would scoff and say, you know, and it, but the actually writing a a full length, you know, relationship in, in a shorter word count is incredibly difficult. Like it strips away yeah. everything else. But to do it in ten thousand words, holy cow, that is I'm incredibly so, impressed. So, Ella, can you give us some tips on how to yeah. do that in ten thousand yes. words? Yeah. Yes. Um. So, I mean, I have a I have a formula at this point, like I've written so many of them. It's like, when I say seven chapters, Mm. maybe eight, if it's the final in the series, Mm. I like to include, like if it's last in the series, have a scene with all the people from the series together. So that's another chapter, but I, but I mean, I, not everybody in the genre, I think always includes the whole, all the beats, Mm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't read as like, I don't like keep on with it all the time, but mine, that's one of the things I like about, like Mm. I'm proud of Mm. (laughs) is that we include all the beats. So it's, um, you know, a meet cute at Mm. the end of chapter one or the beginning of chapter two, um, all of the book, all of them are alternating POV between the hero and Mm. the MC. So it's, you know, that, that creates some opportunities and some challenges if you want to include all the beats. Yes. <laughs> um, so the meet cute is right at that point. And then I like to make sure that they, that they like each other, that they aren't just like mm. attracted to each other. <laughs> like I like them to have like something that, oh, I like that about that person, not just how hot they are. Mm. <laughs> so that's yeah. usually like what chapters three <laughs> two and three are Mm. and four I like them to get a little bit closer (laughs) you know they they usually have like a kiss Mm. because they're coming together they like each other and then um five uh there's usually some kind of down you know like uh (laughs) uh-oh by Mm -hmm. the end of five there's a misunderstanding Mm. or you know this the downbeat (laughs) yeah and um and then, well, no, in five, no, no, no. In five, they get a little closer. I, so this is, I like to have a kiss, mm-hmm. which leads up to some kind of how, 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 what can I talk about on the show? Oh, <laughs> like want. some kind of intimate situation. Yes. It's we not go. all the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to build up mm-hmm. to the intimate. We have so an they entree have... before the main course. So we're doing yes. the entree. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they have that in like chapter five. In six, they have a uh oh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> a it's all doom and disaster. Yeah. Yes, exactly. we can't and be then there's a grand gesture, 
And then uh, chapter seven is we're together now. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then an epilogue because yeah. this audience loves their epilogues. In fact, two epilogues would be ideal, except for by the time I get to the epilogues, I'm tired of writing. Yeah. That mm-hmm. epilogue. So like, that's, that's not my cool. ex- most exciting part, but yeah. 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 So each book basically has one full sex scene. Yes. Right. In mine, other people have more, Yes. you know, but I, I can't get multiple sex scenes and the liking them, right. <laughs> them liking yeah. each other yeah. in 10,000 words. Yeah. So, yeah yeah okay and how long does it take you to write a um a 10,000 word short story yeah um well it takes it's like about a week you know Mm -hmm. if I'm just going strong Mm -hmm. um with my co-writer you know we were doing one a week so and that's kind of what we've been doing more because I I'm a slow writer actually like I'm a very slow writer so if I'm writing one a week I'm not doing anything else (laughs) professionally um because I only write like maybe 400 words in half an hour Uh maybe five like I'm not fast um so it was a relief for me to Uh co-write because I really like coming up with the ideas conceptualizing Uh she'll do the first draft and then I come through and Uh add so so what's that editing we edit for each other (laughs) you know we've got two eyes looking at it yeah. I suppose as a teacher, you have that, yeah. that skill. Yeah, it's that was one of the things that I was always kind of good at. Like I wasn't yes. like I I didn't don't have a special education in it. It's just something that I didn't mm. struggle with growing up. So mm. and she's also in the same kind of boat. So mm. we just kind of do it for each other. But did you not, when you were on your own, did you just just like you knew that you were kind of going to be okay and didn't get a separate editor or did you do you think that's something people should do um yes that's kind of like that's kind of what I did is like I'm not one well for one but hmm, when I coach other people when I talk to other people like if you don't know then I would get an editor (laughs) like like I would lean towards getting an editor and making sure maybe not a developmental editor for such a short or maybe only a development editor for the first couple until you're yeah. like, okay. Cause it's mm-hmm. not like, it's so short. You have to keep to a specific structure, mm-hmm. but yeah. a cop, you know, a copy editor, maybe if you aren't sure, I would definitely, if you, you don't want to have people not be. doing it because of typos, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is just my observation, which may or may not make any sense whatsoever and probably won't. But um, like, I don't consider 400 words in an hour slow, but that's, you know, I'm, I'm the world's slowest writer but in some ways being slower means that you're not putting just all that extraneous words in so you're 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 able to keep to that tighter structure if you like you know so things are maybe a little bit more considered in terms of word choice and that kind of thing as you're writing Ella rather than like I know when I've been doing nano I you know you're so focused on the word count that you just basically writing often overwriting everything to get the word count up so whereas this is more about making sure you're delivering the story it's sort of a different approach isn't it yeah I I'm I would call myself an underwriter like I write short Mm. I don't I don't and I think that's been a benefit for me with this because it's easier for me to say I do know other authors who kind of struggle to stay in the short Mm. you know within that length because they kind of want to go off and that's not that's not my style of writing. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate it though. Like I wish I had it a little bit more sometimes because I'm like, I, I like description. I'm like, Mm. it's a house, the (laughs) house, you know, like she went into the house and like, you know, my co-writer's like, what kind of house? (laughs) The house. (laughs) (laughs) What did it look like? (laughs) Yeah. 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 So I'm intrigued. How do you actually just, if you wouldn't mind, um, give us a little insight into how you actually, um, you mentioned that um, you you plot and, and do you plot first and then she she writes the first draft? Like just your working process. Yeah. Um, so currently I, I always, I always, I like to come up with the characters first, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm coming up with a cute meet cute and I, and the 
the challenge, like the, the misunderstanding or whatever, Mm -hmm. like it has to, that those are the two parts I come up with first, like the people and the meet cute and the challenge. Um, and so I will, you know, right. We, we usually have like a concept of the series. So like one of the ones we did was, you you know, like four brothers Mm -hmm. who like, not like mafia, but like just kind of shady, shady (laughs) and successful, you know, so they can be kind of sexy and like, not, they can protect their women without Mm -hmm. worrying about morals, you know, that kind of thing, that kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have that concept in place and then we're like, okay, so there's going to be an older brother. He's going to be the responsible one. Then we're going to have the, you know, we kind of give each of the guys, (laughs) an idea or based on trope. So we're like, what kind of trope do you feel like writing? Mm. Do you want to write, uh, you know, good girl, bad boy, Mm -hmm. or do you want to write, you know, so we kind of come up with that together. Yeah. Like, what do we want to write? And then, um, I will go, you know, based off of what kind of we want to write, Mm -hmm. like, okay, let me come up with the characters, you know, what's their situation what kind of fun meet cute can we give them one of my favorites I have a series hot guys with glasses and I so it's kind of nerds and and I was like I want to kind of do like a grease kind of like mm-hmm. like she except reverse so he's the nerd and she's the like it's kind of wild too. woman Go grease too yes grease too which is arguably a better grease just saying <laughs> Michelle just, Pfeiffer come on mm, yes yeah <laughs> And so I had a really cute me cute. I thought I was like, Ooh, if we have that and he's kind of nerdy, like we'll have her be, he's in the bath. He's going to the restroom at like a building and she walks in. Cause she doesn't want to wait for the women's line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she kind of like looks over and is like, not bad. And kind of one that's their me cute. And he's like, nice. Like with the glasses and she's like, you know, t- t- tattoo and kind of <laughs> funky. And I was like, that sounds fun. You know, and so then I do that and yeah. And so uh then she'll write the first, you know, I I write a detailed outline because it's you know, she's writing a whole first draft. Yeah. So my outline can be like 2,500 words. Yeah. You know, it's detailed. Um, because I want to do my part <laughs> of the partnership. And then she can go from right the first draft and usually um you know, she'll put brackets in when she's like, eh, yeah, <laughs> not sure about this, you know, like the brackets and I'll come through. Um, usually, and that's, I kind of do like when I read through it, I kind of do my own, you know, like, like I'm a beta reader or like I'm mm-hmm. an editor and I'm like, oh, this could use a little you know, more, more emotion or that's kind of an odd thing for her to say or something, you know, and I'll do that, do all the brackets. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess too, when you when you're writing in a series together like that, regardless of who's actually written the book, you know, sometimes you do it separately. Um, mm. It's always going to have the same flavor, isn't it? Because mm. with the editing yep. for each other and the what you put into each other's work, it's always going to be. Yeah. Line, yeah, I mean, we communicate a lot while we're doing it, you know, because characters have, you know, the if you are in book one, the other three guys have to show up, or at least the next guy has yes. to show up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or the next girl, if you're doing it, you know, but they have to show up, has to be consistent in character. You know, he can't show up being a nice guy in book one and then be a a jerk by the time it gets to his book. Mm. So do you have a a particular number of books in a series that you found that works the best Ella in terms of three, four more? Yeah. Um, if people are liking and we like eight or more, you know, like, because they're so short, Mm -hmm. um, it kind of gives you time to really get to know the character. Like Mm. the benefit of doing a series with all the same characters somewhat is that you can actually do character development Mm. throughout multiple books instead of just the one book when you're writing in 10,000 words, you know, you can actually give them a little bit more Mm. (laughs) in the other books in the series like not a lot because you don't have a lot of words but yeah some (laughs) so that's kind of maybe come up as um side characters and future books Mm -hmm. so you've got your main couple and Mm -hmm. then there's book one's couple uh oh look they've had a baby kind of thing over there (laughs) you know yes yeah um usually 
usually we know like it's I, all of my love, all of the love they're insta love. So they happen yeah. in like four days. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like, yeah. hi, four days yeah. later, like yeah. the most I think I've ever done was like two weeks mm -hmm. <laughs> from when they meet to, and that's yeah. not my style. I don't prefer that. I prefer to just, I don't like to skip time no. in mine. Yeah. <laughs> so it's usually like gotcha. four days. Yeah. Um, and then the next one, you know, we, we try to end it if we can on like a little bit of a hook for the next one. Mm -hmm. If it's not like an actual event, then like putting the next hero mm -hmm. at the end Got of it. So she's, the previous book. You're talking it also actually in the opposite way. You can have it in the previous book, in book one, you talk about, you know, characters that are going to be book four, right? And then in book mm -hmm. two, you could have a little bit more about the guy from book four. In book mm -hmm. three, you have a little bit. So by the time you get to book four, he's actually got three books worth of characterization. Yes. And then you, you, he's sort of hitting the ground running That's when you smart. get to that. That's mm -hmm. so smart. Yep. Man, your head, your brain must be. <laughs> like... it's, it's, I mean, that one, that, I would say if somebody else were doing this, even if you just did the character from the next book, yeah. like if you don't do anything, but just except yes. for the next book character, yeah, so I wow. like, mm. we didn't start doing that fancy stuff until we'd been doing it for a while. Like, <laughs> but I would say at least the next book character should be mentioned mm. in. Yeah. I mean, it you makes do it. I like yeah, the idea but... that you're talking about, you've got the four brothers and you mm -hmm. work out who's the responsible one, who's the who's mm -hmm. the rebel, who's the, you know, whatever, you know, and then you know as you're going through that you've got this already set up so that you don't have to, yeah. yeah. It creates its own story, doesn't it? Because mm. you've got a personality there already. Yeah. Mm. And you know how in, you oftentimes in the stories you have the character who comes in, you know, like maybe the hero does need somebody to talk to him about like, mm -hmm. hey, you're being a jerk. <laughs> You can have that be the next mm, brother, the yeah. next book yeah. <laughs> guy, yeah. or, you yeah. know, or, or you, or sometimes like in the epilogue, like mm. oftentimes I'll have the epilogue be oftentimes the epilogue is always, a it's always an, a, an engagement. Like he's proposing they're getting married or they're having a baby. Like those yeah. are the epilogues, right. <laughs> Yeah, but you can mention, yeah. I, I tend for a proposal because it's hard for me to write the five year down. So I usually do end up with a proposal and I, you know, you can mention in, in that scene, mm -hmm. the next character can show up during mm -hmm. the proposal. Yeah. 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 How, do you have, have, um, mm -hmm. are, are these books, um, Amazon exclusive or are you wide? These are Amazon exclusive. Um, I think the audience is heavily KU. Mm. you know they're all in KU and I think mm. it's because I mean imagine a book <laughs> a book an hour <laughs> you yeah. know like yeah. how like yes they're only 99 cents although I think there's a movement to make them a little longer because it is still a lot of work like if you think about it mm. like a whole you mean you mean a bit more expensive rather than yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. well yeah, we're going to think uh, there's a movement right now happening, making the shorter books two ninety nine instead of 99. But I think there's a movement in romance of going of like raising prices and being like, mm -hmm. our books are worth actually a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I think books that used to be two ninety nine like three or four or five years ago are now moving up to three and four ninety nine, mm -hmm. which I'm glad mm -hmm. yeah, because it is a lot of work. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot, actually a lot of work in making a whole set of new characters mm -hmm. every week. Like yeah. I, as I've been doing this, I'm like, oh, you know, the nice thing that would be about writing sh longer is I would get to stay with these people and not have to come up with brand new, right. mm. brand new motivations, mm. brand new, like conflict, brand new, you know, it's yeah a lot. <laughs> is that something you're considering? You would ever consider writing longer or are you yes. happy writing? It's something we're very much considering, like mm. the two of us, because I, up until like the, in the last few months, um, I would say it's easier to advertise for books at two ninety nine 99 than at 99 cents, because we all know like at 99 cents, I'm making 30 cents mm -hmm. from every purchase, yeah. <laughs> which is a very small margin. If I'm running mm -hmm. ads, like yeah. I can, I can do Amazon ads, but Facebook ads are very hard mm -hmm. to 
Yeah. Like to manage at that profit margin. Mm -hmm. And so longer Mm -hmm. gives us more wiggle room and ad spending, Mm -hmm. which I think is a huge component of making it your living is being able to make your living is to be able to find new people. And so, and then you'd spice them out a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. Cause it just takes longer to write. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you think, do you think the, the audience is a completely separate audience? Or do you think some of your mm. short story people will come to you long version? I don't think it's a, it's not a separate audience. Cause I've talked to my audience. Like I know who's reviewing, like it is, mm-hmm. but it, it's like, you know how like a, a, a square is a pal- parallelogram, but not all parallelograms are squares. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know, like, like, like it's a smaller audience. Like it's, it's, there are plenty of people in the short romance audience that read long. There's not as many long romance, like longer romance readers oh. that read short. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think all of my readers would come with me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. you know and that would allow me actually to find more readers mm. but they wouldn't necessarily flick back into the short stuff they would want yes the other people who are reading long mm-hmm. wouldn't. yeah yeah it would be a little bit like know. finding new reader it would be finding mm-hmm. new readers mm-hmm. who might not go back to my backlist so in that way it would kind of be a little bit like starting over except for not because I'd start with a bunch of people so mm-hmm. yes yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely that's interesting. We've um, talked about um, editing. Do you guys do your own covers as well, Ella? Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking with the amount of covers yeah, that you're using. Right? Yeah. yeah, I make all the covers. That's oh. part of the part of the co. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I make all the covers, but the nice thing in these is it's very easy. They're all Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's easy. Although not everybody has that. Like, there's, mm-hmm. but it's a Manchester. <laughs> in the background yeah yeah some abs it's a it's a challenge yeah to scroll through yes. the stock photo sites and just thing. look for the best it's very yeah. time consuming you could spend a whole day looking for yeah. the right photo and it's so. all, it's very productive time spent yeah well <laughs> spent <laughs> you've got a hat so yeah. <laughs> um, and so can you just talk a little bit so you said that you do AMS ads um, mm-hmm. what other marketing do you do on for your short stories like how do you yes so what I if anybody is looking to doing them I mean newsletter huge but what I when I have told like other people who are looking at it uh, the newsletter builder especially because they're short so what I what I didn't do and what my friend author friend did do like I just put mine up and was like I hope people will read it in the next one she actually wrote her first short romance and then joined a newsletter promo um and got a thousand or whatever subscribers with her first because it's a free book newsletter promo Mm -hmm. and then once it was you know once the promo was over then she published it as her first book but she started with a thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So when she put the second book out, she already had a thousand people Mm -hmm. who were interested in her short romances. And there are like on book funnel, there are promos for short romances, like regularly. So if it like, so it's, it's common, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so then a few months after I started, I, I organized one and I got like 1400 subscribers. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Like organically, I think I had gotten 80 <laughs> subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I had a bonus epilogue mm. in the end of my first book to try and get subscribers. Mm. But I think I only had maybe 80, maybe a hundred, but maybe three months, three or four months after I started, I did a, I organized a promo and, and again, I have no shame. So I just messaged authors I'm like want to be my promo (laughs) why not yeah so that's the main marketing that I started out with is and that's what I tell people and because it's a thousand or ten thousand words like I wrote after that I wrote a separate book that's just like it's still there Mm -hmm. free and Mm -hmm. I can and a lot of other authors they'll rotate so they'll write another one so they kind of get 
they'll write another short Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. use it to build their newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. I have over, I have like 6,000 people on my newsletter and I know people with a lot more. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Nice number. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anything else you recommend people do when they're marketing Mm. shorts? Yeah. The AMS ads are actually, you know, if you have a good, if you have a good cover, <laughs> um, I do like the AMS ads because people are already on Amazon buying books. Um, I also, and I have no proof of this, but I think Amazon likes it when you give them money. So I think they like give a little boost to people, to authors who are also running ads mm-hmm. in yeah. addition to. Um, but really I think the main marketing thing is releasing consistently. Like it's, it's not for this particular audience. Um, I think it's making sure that you release every week or two. I just thought of something. (laughs) The other thing that a lot of people do frequently, you know, how there's like group, um, group series, like multi-author series, Mm -hmm. And you kind of see that a little bit with romance and paranormal romance and fantasy, you know, the happening now, but it's been like with, it happens a lot in short romance. Um, because again, 10,000 words. Like, like, and so that's actually a really great way is connecting with other short romance authors who've been around for a while and, um, seeing if you can if you're getting an invitation into one of these or just asking or creating your own, which I have also done mm-hmm. a, a series and inviting people because then you get obviously their audience, your audience. Right. And so yeah. how does and that those, work? So you would write book one and someone else writes book two and, mm-hmm. and you just have the characters mm-hmm. or is it a, a setting yeah. or a town or something like what? Yeah. The- so, so I, I organize like, I've done a couple of them. One of them was like a Halloween and I was like, all I want to do is like, we have a mansion, we have a haunted mansion <laughs> that there will be a Halloween party at. And, oh, nice. and all you have idea. to do is, and I'm like, it's a giant mansion. Like it's a mansion that could have whatever you want to in it. So just as long you like, you just mm. utilize what you need from the mansion. Mm. And, and then, um, and then each person gets to write their own romance, Halloween themed um, with the mansion okay. <laughs> at some nice. point. And there's a big party. I also did one that was like with pets. So it was like, you know, it had to have an animal mm-hmm. <laughs> and I made the covers. So I provided the covers for everybody, but it's like, pick, pick a hero and an animal and then, you know, mm-hmm. write your story. And mm-hmm. they, those ones didn't have to be, all it had to be was animal, but some of them are like in the same town. Those are harder because mm-hmm. you have to then like if you have different people showing up mm. in different, like I did participate in somebody else's hitman one and they had like the, the organizer of, you know, the company and that's harder. Cause you have to make sure that that character is consistent through all the books. Mm. And I don't like to deal with that part. Cause I'm yeah. like, I don't want to be in charge of other people's consistency. Mm, so I'm yeah. like, there's a mansion. It's yeah. giant. Mm. <laughs> I did. I'm like, here's is- the picture of it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so it's smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just, you know, I've been, I've seen one author, Hope Ford. You know, if anybody wants mm. to know who to follow, not me, Hope Ford mm. is amazing. She, I know she organized like a full year series. Wow. That it's like once a week, 52 books, 52 books with different authors that she's mm. like, okay, your book comes out on, mm. you know, wow. May, whatever. Nice. That yeah. is an organization for you. Yeah. It's high level. Yes. I would not yes. do that. Maybe Cheryl, who is our supreme organizing mm. person, <laughs> might yeah. be able to do something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. But I, kind of organization, do you have a particular, like, do your readers know every Tuesday, you know, there's a new book, or how do you do your scheduling? Um, we were, we've taken a break recently mm. just for a little bit of burnout. I think in just life burnout, (laughs) Um, but we were releasing 
every Thursday. Um, it makes it very easy to write newsletters when you're releasing every week or every other week, because yeah. it's every mm-hmm. newsletter is an announcement. So it's yeah. like, what am I going to put in my newsletter? The book. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, <for> content. <laughs> yes. No, it's very easy mm-hmm. to write the newsletter. So we did that. Um, and we had, you know, we have a Facebook group, but we haven't, you know, that we participate in a little bit, but mostly I, I like newsletter. I like the newsletter. <laughs> it's my favorite way of communicating, yeah. especially during the last couple of years when it's been hard to be extroverted for me personally, yeah. it's been hard to be yeah. energy out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I totally, yeah. Totally get that. I had another thought, but I forgot it. So just <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> Can I just ask about so the blurbs on short fiction? Is it different mm-hmm. to the blurbs on on say a longer book, or is it just the same? Like you, yeah. I I used to do, and when I first started, it was like there was a very specific format. It was like her POV, like his POV, like it's like her her name, like Jane. I started, you know, I just started at this library. But then, you know, there was a winter storm and I got stuck in it and then, you know, and, but I got stuck in it with this handsome man. So what am I going to do? And that then his awesome. POV would, what book is that? <laughs> the, whole ser- uh, the curvy librarians of sugar oh. kale series. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so she's a librarian and, um, it's a book about four curvy librarians because, <laughs> cause I love books and curvy, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, let me write about people like me <laughs> um, and or who I'd like to be the librarian, but yeah. Okay. Um, and then the blur and then the second would be his kind of from the other side, mm-hmm. but I think recently, like uh, recently it's kind of gone shorter, like less. Cause it was ended up being like a good, like, uh, like 10 or 12 lines to do hit hers mm-hmm. and then his. Mm-hmm. And so now I pick one, one of them, the most, the most compelling one. <laughs> and that I think readers will find the most compelling. So like, mm-hmm. if I were to do that same one, it would definitely be like that particular one would be her POV. Cause she's stuck in a library during a storm with a dangerous stranger, like a dangerous awesome. stranger. <laughs> like, it is not going to read that book. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so yeah. they, it, that one was a, you know, close quarters mm-hmm. story. Um, and so that, so I picked the one and I, you know, I'm like, I, with my blurbs, like I, again, it's formulate cause it's marketing, right? Like, yeah. like you want to do what's working. You want to do and I don't try to summarize the book, but I do give them like, Hey, it's a curvy librarian. She manages the library. So they kind of know who it is. And then I like the second line is, but then something happens. Mm. <laughs> they get stuck yeah. <laughs> and not just stuck, but stuck with this handsome man. And we always have like a three beat and we try to include a pun. So it's like, he's tall, sexy, and knows how to turn her pages. <laughs> <laughs> but when they get out, you know, when they get unstuck, will they still want to be together? Will he still yeah. be interested in her? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's that's it, the it always ends with a but is love gonna, you know, yeah. but is it gonna yeah. is Work love out. does will love win? And we yeah. all know yes, of course, it's a romance, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like you're, um, if you're a marathon or if you're training for as a runner, you would be training to be the hookiest, like most marketing kind of just um, cut through the waffle and get to the um, hook person, Mm -hmm. Ella, because you're writing shorter, but you're also delivering those those tropes and those hooks that people want so you know mm-hmm. that clearly resonates when you started off you were clearly able to sort of see those things I guess is what I'm saying I mean I I started in a position that most people haven't although most people have listened to a lot of podcasts so it's yes. not like it's not totally different <laughs> because mm-hmm. the, I, yeah. I get to talk to the people and ask what I want to ask when mm-hmm. I'm interviewing authors um 
get but I, <laughs> but I definitely like, I sat down and was like, and I took like months, <laughs> months and months. And I iterated it actually too, where I was like, what are the things that consistently show up? Like I didn't do like the, you know, the offshoots of like, Ooh, squirrel. What's that shiny thing? I didn't, I was like, what shows up consistently? That's what I'm and doing so, wrong. I'm the, I'm, I'm going up the shiny thing. Yeah. I mean, I still yeah. love the shiny things though, but as I was trying to organize this to help people, I couldn't mm. like, as I'm like, I might teach this to somebody else. I'm not going to include the shiny things. Like that doesn't mean I don't love the shiny things, yeah. but I'm like, yeah. but I'm not going to provide the shiny things. I want to provide them the core of what they need. And so yeah. I, started I think from a place that not everybody starts from Mm -hmm. and I and I think that I I actually admire people who just kind of like I'm just doing it and then figuring it out along the way which is so brave (laughs) and so difficult (laughs) yeah I think any kind of publishing is an act of courage no matter what it is whether it's you know 1,000 words or 100,000 words yeah Mm -hmm. yes I'm I love writers I'm so grateful to Mm. all the people who have stories like as I I'm like people just like come up with this stuff out of their head like it's just like was an idea Mm. in someone's head somewhere and then they Mm. wrote it down and now I get to live it (laughs) like in my like it's Mm. amazing yeah 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 that's cool so is there so you do coaching and, and there's a little bit of mindset and I always love to talk mindset so so do you have so if someone's out there listening and they're um about to publish or just early days in the publishing what what kind of mindset do they have to have what do they what do they have to be kind of thinking about mm-hmm. to kind of be successful Ooh, okay yes um it it's like so many different thoughts coming up okay so like my first thought like when I first published I was like (laughs) I had some tequila because I was having a panic attack (laughs) (laughs) I'm like oh my gosh my it's out there for other people to read (laughs) you know um so like maybe but actually as the coaching part uh I think deadlines this is not sexy. Like the unfortunate thing, like, like I wish like my advice were super sexy, but I'm like deadlines and accountability. Like if you put your pre-order up, it's a really good motivation to get it done. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, yeah. it's up for pre-order. Even if you give yourself a long pre-order, um, like in term, cause I found that a lot of people like myself, like want to, we'll procrastinate on it because we're worried it's not good enough or mm. um, we aren't good enough or usually that's the core of it. Some version of I'm not good enough or what I created is not good enough. <laughs> so we'll procrastinate on it with that fear in mind. Um, so alcohol or some other <laughs> yeah, just, um, um, accountability which is like the pre-order, but also friends like other, like I have a co-writer now, you know, that's very motivating, like, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be a co-writer. It could just be another author who you're like, let's get our stuff done showing up on, um, Mm -hmm. discord. And there's like a little word County thing on discord. There's like a little app widget thing that you're like, okay, we put our words in, we write for 25 minutes. (laughs) <laughs> and we and it calculates our word count and then we you know just that accountability and support the this community is super supportive like mm-hmm. it's actually like when i found it i was like oh my gosh my people you know because because people are so generous cuz if you write a good romance it doesn't preclude people from reading my good romance mm-hmm. like in fact I can only write even at 10,000 word books, a one a week max for me, (laughs) like, like that's max, Mm. but those readers, they can read that in an hour and they will keep reading, you know? So like, there's no competition between me and you Mm. because they're going to keep buying all the books that they can. So actually the better books that you put out, the, you know, the better quality books you put out, the more likely more people are to read KU. 
-hmm. and self-published authors because yeah. you're putting out quality stuff and it reflects well on me. Mm. Yeah. So I like to support all the authors. Like I'm like, yeah, mm. yes. And that's so that I'm reaching out to friends and people like that mm -hmm. and have, you know, meeting with them regularly makes a huge difference, I think. Mm -hmm. And approaching, gosh, and approaching it like there's so much. Like, did I create a whole course for just this kind of thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and approaching it like a business, mm -hmm. you know like not as a hobby, like in order to make the money, this is like the caveat for like, you can be as creative as you want, <laughs> like write whatever you want, but in order to make the money, approach it like a business, like you, <laughs> but <laughs> like, <laughs> but <laughs> don't be hard on you. Like I'm speaking mostly to women right now. Cause I was just talking with, I had interviewed somebody this morning and the challenges that women have versus the challenges that men have mindset wise are different. And I know this from interviewing, like, I'm not, I don't have like the three or three or four other people on mine. It's always been interviews and I've interviewed plenty of men and women and their, their mindset is very different. They don't have the same. Am I good enough to yeah. the extent yes. that women have? Mm -hmm. And so being gentle with yourself, <laughs> like being really gentle with yourself is also very important, mm. I think. Yeah. Good advice. That's awesome. Mm. So we're, we're rolling into the end of the interview now. So I just wanted to know, is there one piece of advice that, you know, you've given some awesome advice just now, but is there, just, just think of the one thing that you would say to someone out there in the world who's thinking maybe about writing short stories or getting into writing, what, what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so funny because I asked the same exact question to all of mine and I didn't think about it before I came on here. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, I, it would, I would say like, you are good enough. Oh, yeah. You are good enough. Like what you have to offer is not just enough. It's more than enough. And, and what is in your heart, what is in your writing, what is in your creativity. Like, even if people aren't finding you or reading, like there's so many reasons why your book might not be doing well, that has nothing to do with your writing or story. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you <laughs> and what, you know, the quality of what you have created. Like there's a you, you, you know, there's a ton of different things that need to come together mm -hmm. <laughs> for it to work that have nothing to do with the quality of the writing. You're like, yes, that's an aspect, but it's, but it's not, you know, like it's not, it could be absolutely something else. So I just, um, I would tell people like you are enough and, and, and I didn't mention this in the whole thing, but like my 10th book my 20th book like also publish like finish your book and put it out there because you can't you can't get better yes, <laughs> you can't get true. better until you do the next one like I know things now about writing that I didn't know at my first book and mm. I there was no other way to learn them except by mm finishing my books. <laughs> like, like I could have listened to all the podcasts in the world mm. and tried to, and, and, and I still wouldn't have known that stuff until I finished it. So you're enough. So put it out there and nice. keep going. That's awesome. That's fantastic advice. Now, if, if people want to find you, um, again, after listening to your, mm -hmm. um, beautiful voice for the last hour oh. um <laughs> where, where can they go uh, the best place is author like a boss and i'm kind of redoing that dot com i'm kind of redoing my website and i need to mm. <laughs> i need to i mean you can find if you just search liz fox on amazon you know you can find all the books all this mm -hmm. be prepared for some man chest 
but <laughs> the best place to find me is, is authorlikeaboss.com. Awesome. And Sha, where can we be found? Well, we can be found at spagirlspodcast.com um, and we are on YouTube as well. So if you are um, listening to this and want to see want to see our beautiful faces, because we are enough, we are on YouTube because it took us a lot of uh, just thinking about going back to feeling like you're enough or second guessing yourself believe me it took us years to <laughs> to have the to um, courage enough. to put ourselves out yeah. there you know and by mm. i mean honestly anyhow but it's just yeah so mm. what a treat having you on today ella thank you so much you i think i i imagine this is going to be one of those podcasts that people are going to re re-listening re to mm. and i think you would have given people a lot of energy mm -hmm. Good. That's that's what I love. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> I'm like, yes, put it out there. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for listening to another episode, and thank you for being here with us, Ella. Mm -hmm. um, we will. This is another episode of the Sparkles Podcast. We'll be back again next week. But for now, we say Bye. goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.